to mind when I say the word arsenic? Anything? Anybody remember anything about chemistry? <laughs> All right. Well, in my 13 years studying chemistry, I can tell you that arsenic is number 33 on the periodic table of our elements. All right, my students could tell you how many protons and neutrons arsenic has. But throughout my graduate career um, at UMass, I also learned about arsenic-containing compounds. And that's probably what you're more familiar with. So arsenic is a poison. It was previously used um, as a rat poison to kill rats, mice, roaches, ants, and bed bugs. It's been used as a chemical warfare agent, right, as a cancer treatment, right, and pressure-treated wood. Right, so it's been used for a variety of reasons, all of which have to do with killing something, right, killing mice um, or rodents. I had the opportunity to study arsenic in my graduate career. Um, so at UMass, I got my PhD in chemistry and started studying arsenic and arsenic-containing compounds. Um, the first year was all based on articles that I read online. So digging through the research articles, learning about arsenic, arsenic-containing compounds, where they were in the environment, and how I came in contact with them regularly. Right, the picture um, up there is also about a disease called Blackfoot's disease. So people that are chronically poisoned with arsenic develop lesions on their hands and feet. This is a big problem over in Bangladesh and West Bengal, where their water supply and their food supply are contaminated with arsenic. So over time, if you're continually poisoned with arsenic, this is what can happen. Arsenic also leads to cancers and ultimately to death if it's not treated. Okay. So as I was doing my research, I started thinking about how I came across arsenic in my everyday life. Right. As a child, one of my favorite playgrounds to play on was this big wooden playground. Right. Lots of castles and stairs to climb. I could run around for hours with my sister. They had these awesome metal slides in the summertime where you could burn your skin sliding down. <laughs> I, what I found out later in my research was that the wood used to build these playgrounds was from pressure-treated wood that contained very high concentrations of arsenic. Right? Arsenic was there for a reason, so the wood wouldn't rot, the bugs didn't like eating uh, the wood, but it also leached out into the soil. Right? So when I was playing in the dirt, right, you're picking up that arsenic on your hands and it can be absorbed. If you're getting little splinters or touching the, the wood, that arsenic is also absorbed in your skin. And this was kind of shocking for me to figure out. Right? As a little child just playing, I had no idea that arsenic existed in the environment and that I was coming into contact with it weekly, maybe even daily. Right. Throughout my PhD research, I actually studied arsenic in rice. Right. And this was even more of a shock to me. Rice, a main food staple. Many countries throughout the world, this is their food supply. They drink water and rice they're eating every single day in large quantities. It turns out that rice really loves arsenic. And arsenic is present naturally in the Earth's crust. So I mentioned earlier people in Bangladesh and, and um, West Bengal and many areas of India have been affected by this crisis because their water is poisoned with arsenic but through natural sources. So it's present in the rocks, and it rains, right, and the arsenic is taken up in the, in the water. That same water is used to irrigate their crops, and their main food staple is rice. And rice being grown in these flooded plains is very good at taking up the arsenic all the way into the grain that we eat. Right. In the United States, arsenic is present in our rice for a different reason. And that is from previous pesticide and herbicide use on cotton fields. Those same cotton fields are now used to grow rice. And the arsenic stays in the soil, the rice grows, and once again we get different kind of arsenic that's in our grain. I need water, I need water. Right, so this was really shocking to me. Arsenic in your rice, it's a poison, it kills people. Right, why isn't there a big news story about this? Why aren't there regulations, no regulations in the United States about arsenic content in your rice? 
Should I be scared to eat rice? Should I stop eating rice altogether? How can I bring more awareness? Right, so what I, my goal here is to bring more awareness to this issue. It's not to scare everybody. Right, I still eat rice. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to teach you, um, hopefully, to be more aware of the issue and how you can yourself keep updated on all these health impacts that we have. OK. All right, so arsenic in our rice supply. Actually, just April 1st of 2016, just last month, the FDA, for the first time ever, put out a probable proposing a limit for an action level on arsenic in infant cereals. So this is another issue. Right? Infant cereals, when you come off of breast milk, many of the infant materials are rice-based. And that is the sole <laughs> diet of some infants, right? And their bodies are so small, they're ingesting high, very high concentrations of arsenic. Right, so the FDA just put out this news release proposing a limit or action level of 100 parts per billion. So that means that the government thinks and has studied and researched that out of 1 billion particles that could fill up this room, if 100 of those are arsenic, Right, that means that it's harmful to your health and could potentially cause cancer in the future. Right, it's, what's even more alarming about this study and this proposal, out of the hundreds of samples that they tested, only 47% were below that limit. Right, that means that the infant cereals and formulas that we have out on the market right now, 53% of those formulas are above a safe limit for us to consume, for our babies to consume. Right. When I'm reading this, right, this document was over 200 pages long, very technical information. So that sort of made me alarmed as well, because in talking with my family and friends, they had no way to access this information. You can go to the website and download the document, but it's very technical and very hard to get through. All right, so I'm just going to pull out some main points for that. All right, so hundreds of rice samples were taken and uh, evaluated for their arsenic content for this FDA study that happened in 2016, or sorry, 2013. All right, if you look at this list, right, basmati rice has a lower concentration of arsenic. You see the infant cereals have a very low concentration, so below, th below two micrograms per serving, but because of the infant body size, they're a lot smaller, so they're a lot more affected by that arsenic level. Right. If you look at the graph, can you see which, which type of rice has the most arsenic? Brown rice, brown rice, which is surprising to a lot of people that I talk to, because brown rice is pushed as a very nutritious, um, better than white rice, right? Brown rice still has the, the husk, the hull on the outside, and that's where the arsenic loves to accumulate. Uh, white rice, that husk is removed, so there's less arsenic. So what I want you to gain from this information is that, not to, not, no, keep eating rice, but in lower quantities, right? And if you have the option between brown and white rice, maybe choose a white rice instead, right? So you see brown rice is almost double of what rice, white rice contains. All right, so if you love brown rice and you want to get nutrients from that, and maybe just half your portion. All right, remember these are all per serving size. A normal serving size, if you read the label, is about only one quarter of a cup. Um, so I know my, my husband's Dominican, and he loves his rice. Used to eat rice every single day, a huge plate of it. So now we've just cut back a little bit. So maybe three times a week, and limit your portion, right? And he went on this big diet craze, brown rice, brown rice, right? So white rice now. <laughs> okay. So a couple things to take away from my message. I hope that you've all learned that arsenic is contained in rice. Over long periods of time, it has the potential to cause cancer. I'd like to say there are no direct links at this moment in the research, but just because there hasn't been a study published yet, doesn't mean that that's not what the future holds. All right, so don't wait for this research to be completed in order to take control of your own life. 
Right, it takes years of research. I studied in graduate school for four years trying to come up with a good method to determine arsenic. So it not only takes scientists to come up with good validated methods, once we have the methods, then it takes the politicians years to pass laws. Um, so finally, the FDA did propose a limit, although it hasn't passed as a law yet, starting with infant cereals, so our most vulnerable population. Right, I want you to all be aware that arsenic is in rice and to take some steps to make sure that you live a healthy life. So white rice instead of brown rice. And I would limit your portions if you're eating rice every day. Think about different ways to supplement that. Um, if you have a little baby at home, look into different types of infant rice formulas instead of just um, your rice-based formulas. I did a workshop a couple summers ago and presented this information, and a woman was really alarmed because her daughter and herself just got diagnosed with celiac disease. So that's a gluten allergy. So they can't have things like wheat, um, so any of the breads or pastas. Right, so her whole diet was changing into a rice-based diet, and she was really alarmed and unaware of the issue. Right, so we just talked it over and came up with some alternatives, right, different starch materials um, that you can base in your diet. Right, what else I want you to do for the future? The FDA website is a really good resource. They have really long research articles, but they also put out news releases that are just a couple paragraphs. So I would encourage all of you to visit the government sites, the Food and Drug Administration, FDA.gov, um, the EPA puts out um, lists, just news releases, to make yourself aware of the um, crises. Right, Consumer Reports also comes out with some information as well. All right, so stay updated for yourself and your family. All right, I'd like to leave you with this quote by Marie Curie, famous chemist. All right, Nothing in life is to be feared, it is only to be understood. Now is the under time to understand more so that we may fear less. Thank you.